November 3rd, 2005, Sergeant Andrew Colborn goes to the Avery property and questions Stephen Avery regarding the disappearance of Teresa Halbach. November 4th, Investigator Link and Detective Remaker accompany Stephen Avery with his permission to do a walkthrough on his trailer home. Nothing is noted out of place. There are no signs of evidence of Teresa Halbach. November 5, 2005, Stephen leaves early in the morning for Krivitz. Later that day, around 10.40 a.m., the blue RAV4 that is associated allegedly as Teresa Halbach's vehicle is found in the Avery Salvage Yard. I ask you, if Stephen was the killer, would he have actually went to Krivitz, abandoning the victim's vehicle knowingly there with the police actively searching for the victim and her car? Welcome to Missing in Minutes, and this is your blackout. So you guys, we've switched up the name from No Crime, No Time, because honestly, I do not believe that Teresa Halbach is dead. I strongly believe that Teresa Halbach is missing. And for us to be able to help find missing children would be a wonderful way to expand our channel. Bring more attention to not only the missing children, but also bring a lot of people in on the Stephen Avery case, which we desperately need more awareness on both. So if you're going to hide someone's vehicle and it has an unusual name, such as a RAV, R-A-V, printed on the tire cover, would you really leave the ass end out so that that huge giant RAV word is shining for whoever is going through the salvage yard? It is like a beacon that says, here I am, I'm over here. It's a staged event in my opinion, meant to be found. And what's with the spare rambler hood leaning up against the RAV? This accompanies the RAV through the evidence from day one when the RAV is found and still in evidence, if they've even retained the evidence, but it was always housed together. And yet, if you look down the road, when we get into the Brendan Dassey interrogations, we find that we have a hood latch swab. How convenient that we have a hood from the salvage yard where Stephen Avery worked and may have actually touched which is miraculously leaning up against the blue rav. Wow, what are the chances? Another point of interest are these trees that are leaning over the rav that still have the roots on them. And yet we have Earl Avery, who is claiming that he had actually pulled up trees earlier that week by the roots to replant them. One of the other things on the exterior that draws my attention is this cardboard box that's covered in duct tape, like reinforced with silver duct tape, sitting on the hood of the RAV. What in the world would have been in the box that it needed to be reinforced with duct tape, like a protective barrier? Could it have possibly been for that weird battery. I say weird because it's not what should be in the RAV4, according to Kathleen Zellner. In fact, her evidence suggests that it's a Crown Victoria battery, which happens to be what the police used at that time. Which brings me to two questions. If Stephen Avery was guilty, then number one, if he's going to crush the car, as the state's narrative implies, he would have removed the battery. So why would it have a Crown Victoria police type battery in the car? Number two, what in the world would Stephen Avery have used the cardboard box covered in duct tape for? Further investigation shows the CASO report on page 81, a supplemental report dated 11.05.05 by Lieutenant Kelly Sippel goes on to state that on the morning of Saturday, 11.05.05, friends of Teresa were searching the Avery's auto salvage yard where they located, quote, her motor vehicle off the southwest quadrant of the property. It goes on to state, officers from both the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department and Calumet County Sheriff's Department responded to the scene. We also have a second individual reporting the same part of the event. It says here, Lieutenant Herman, 
because remember, Peterson Sheriff still, he reports 110505, and he states individuals were observed to the southwest of the Avery Auto Salvage in a gravel pit area near a gravel conveyor while officers were on the scene in the salvage yard. D.I. Shetter and I walked through the yard to the area where we made contact with five subjects. Christy Hazard, Jolene Bain, Sherry Lamarond, Avery Wygralic, and Trinity Rose. Forgive me if I said the names wrong. These subjects indicated that they were friends of the Halbach family and were assisting with search efforts. I identified the person and they were advised that at this time the salvage yard is a secured area and they needed to leave the general area. After the area was secured, a command post was set up at the south end of Avery Road where it intersects with the Avery property. MTSO remained on the scene to assist CASO providing any resources that they requested to assist with the investigation. Signed by Herman, no less. How does that work? How can Pam Sturm find the victim's vehicle around 1040 on the southeast side? And then on the same morning, five of Teresa Halbach's friends find the same vehicle on the southwest side. Is it possible there really were two RAVs? One found earlier in the day that's blue by the crusher by Pam Sturm and the second rab that's dark green that her friends would recognize. As her mother said, dark green rab four. I'm just asking. If you agree with the theory that this is a staged event, then wouldn't you need plan B? What comes to mind? Robert Herman looking over at the Scooby-Doo crew and going, yeah, and I would have got away with it if it weren't for those nosy kids. Zellner recently released the information that we have a man delivering newspapers that has signed an affidavit stating that he was the eyewitness to seeing Bobby Dassey pushing the RAV4 towards the Avery property on the morning of 11.05.05. Now, according to this eyewitness, Bobby actually was on the driver's side with the door open. Naturally, several questions arise. Number one for me is why did the state not report the handprint or fingerprints or any DNA of Bobby Dassey? Well, was it because he was their star witness? The second question I would have is we know that the VIN number was tampered with as testified in the trial. It had been moved and we know how hard that is to do. So why would Bobby Dassey have moved the VIN number? In my opinion, the only reason to move a vehicle identification number would be to hide the identity. But since the plate remains in the vehicle, that doesn't make any sense. Unless, could it possibly be that that VIN number belongs to the dark green wrap that allegedly Teresa's five friends found? If that is true, that would explain why the license plate are not on the blue vehicle. Simply attaching those plates would reveal evidence of tampering. So rather than risk that, the license plates would be simply found at a later time at a different place. And therefore, by association, naturally associated with the blue RAV4, locking in the identity for the stage. The next question that I would have is, why would Bobby Dassey remove the license plates and fold them into thirds together and put them in the red maroon station wagon on the edge of the property? Is it possible that Bobby Dassey was working as a pawn? as a puppet by the puppet master to plant the fake RAV4 on Stephen Avery's property. The one that had no victim DNA, the one that had no original key, the one that was supposedly locked even though Bobby Dassey has been witnessed with the door open and pushing it, which would imply, yes, you have the key in order to put it into neutral to be able to push this car. Bobby was present when Stephen Avery gashed his finger open on the sharp tent, and he was well aware that Stephen went into his own trailer. If you're bleeding profusely, you would probably go to a sink. So now, if Bobby Dassey has a blue RAV4's key, did he go into Stephen Avery's trailer, plant the key on the fort, and collect the blood out of Stephen Avery's sink to later plant into the RAV? If Bobby Dassey is planting a blue RAV4 and Teresa Halbach's friends are finding the other RAV4, the green RAV4, then Bobby Dassey did not murder Teresa Halbach. 
Bobby Dassey is working for the state to save his own ass. Just my opinion. Just a little food for thought for the week. I want to send a great big thank you out there to each of you that hit the like, subscribe, you share, you leave a comment. And uh, always for everybody that works so hard to show the support for Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey. I love you guys to the moon and back.